Joe from the library. I'm here today with my friend Annie. Hi, I'm Annie. She's from Onzi, and she's here to help us with a special STEM series of pre-K packets. Today we're doing week three, Bubbles. So Annie, what's in the bag? All right, so this week for Bubbles, we have your slip with your storybooks and songs and rhymes on it. And then inside we have a bottle of bubble solution. We have some pipe cleaners and a little bag of beets. Now you will also probably want at least one dish, maybe two if you want to have a place to corral your beads. You'll also want to think about a place to use your bubbles, something that is safe to get soapy and a little bit damp. So maybe outside or in a bathtub, but definitely not on a slippery floor. Sounds fun. All right. Joe, have you ever made bubbles before? I have made bubbles, yes. Have you ever made a bubble wand before? No, I have oh. never made a bubble yes. wand. Well, this is what we're doing today. We get to create some bubble wands. So go ahead and choose a pipe cleaner. Okay, I choose blue. Nice, all right, it matches. I'll take orange. And what you're gonna to want to do is put the ends together. Okay. And you'll want to twist them around a little bit. And you want to leave a little loop at the top. That's what you're going to blow through to make your bubbles. And you can. Since you have a few pipe cleaners, you can experiment with different sizes of loops and different shapes. Now, to give our wand some shape and make it a little bit easier to hold, let's go ahead and put some beads along that handle part. Oh, they both, they fit on the ends that are all tied together. Yeah, that's exactly right. Should and we make a pattern? <gasps> oh, I love that. You <laughs> practice making patterns in week one so you can do some more patterns. Let's see. Okay, so our handles are almost all the way full of beads and now just take the ends of your pipe cleaner and fold them back up and that'll keep those beads from falling back off. You made a lovely pattern, by the way. Very nice. Mine's a little less of a pattern, but that's but okay. colorful. Lots of colors, yeah. that's right. Okay, so now we are going to take our bubble solution, pour it into the plate, and it comes with a wand. So you can experiment with the, the official bubble wand, but I encourage you to experiment with your homemade wand. All right, now just like with regular bubbles, let's go ahead and dip our bubble wand into the solution and we'll gently blow, let's see if we can. Oh, mine keeps popping. I'm gonna try Not making too. mine a little bit smaller. Oh, I almost you had got one. one. I almost had one too. Okay. Boy, it's been a while since I've practiced making <laughs> bubbles. One. Dang it. <laughs> oh, oh, you did it. All right. Well, yes, yes, it's a bubble party. Woo! Yes. <laughs> Lawrence, well, keep your heart out. That's right. <laughs> So you can try more experiments. You can try making who can make the biggest bubbles, who can make the most bubbles, <laughs> Joe. I think so I if you can make more bubbles than Joe. I also wonder if I shape my wand into a heart, do you think it will blow heart-shaped bubbles? Hmm. You might try doing different shapes with your wand. You can try what makes bubbles pop. We have lots of bubbles sitting on here. Why aren't they popping? If I touch them, why aren't they popping? Oh, I don't know. 
So there's lots of different experiments you can keep trying with bubbles. Now, if you wanna go really crazy and turn this into an art experiment, add a few drops of food coloring or liquid watercolor and try blowing Ooh. bubbles over paper. Oh, that yes. sounds fun. That's a pretty fun one. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have a STEM tip for us, Annie? Absolutely, Joe. So today, let's talk about the S in STEM, science. When you and your child are blowing into that bubble wand and observing the bubbles coming out, seeing the different shapes and sizes, experimenting with different bubble wand shapes, you are learning firsthand about cause and effect. When I do something, what happens? This is one of the basic ways we learn about the world around us and our abilities to change it. And it's core at the heart of science. I have four books to share with you today. The first one is called Big Bad Bubble, and Adam Rubin wrote the words, Daniel Salmieri drew the pictures. Um, this is from the same team that brought you Dragon's Love Tacos. The silly story is about La La Land, where monsters live and where bubbles that are popped in our world suddenly appear. The only problem is that monsters are terrified of bubbles. And the illustrations, you can kind of see, it's similar to the Dragon's Love Tacos, but a real cute story, really funny. The second book is called Bubbles Up, and Jacqueline Davies wrote the words, Sonia Sanchez drew the pictures. This book captures the joy of a day at the pool and being underwater. We see a young swimmer dive down into the pool and the bubbles always go up. There she goes. Bubbles are going up. I love all the vibrant blues and the way that the text is integrated into the illustrations. So it's kind of going around the bubbles there. The third book is just called Bubbles. This is by Science All Around, and Meg Gartner wrote the words. This book is all about the bubbles that you blow, including what they are made out of and how they are formed by surface tension. It makes a great companion to explain the science behind today's activity. And the last book I want to tell you about is called Bubble Homes and Fish Farts. Yes, that's right, fish farts. The Fiona Bayrock wrote the words and Carolyn Conahan drew the pictures. This is a fascinating nonfiction picture book that describes how different animals use bubbles. For example, I've got the page marked here. This is a shrew. And did you know that shrews have hairs on their feet that trap bubbles that help them run on top of the water? And scientists, scientists think that herrings, oh, let me find my herring one. There they are. There's herrings, they're like little fish. Scientists think that herrings might use farts, yes, farts, bubbles, fart bubbles that come out of their backsides to communicate with each other. Very fascinating. And there's lots of other uh, cool facts that how insects and mammals use bubbles. We're gonna do some songs with you today. The first one is Bring Back My Bubbles and it goes to the tune of My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. The bubbles flew over the flowers. The bubbles flew over the trees. The bubbles flew over the mountains. So many bubbles I see. Bubbles, bubbles, bring back those bubbles to me, to me. Bubbles, bubbles, oh, bring back those bubbles to me. All right, our next song is I'm a Little Bubble. This is to the tune of I'm a Little Teapot. You ready, Joe? Yeah. Awesome. 
I'm a little bubble, shiny and round. And I'm pretty to look at, but I don't make a sound. The wind lifts me up, and then I drop down to the ground where I pop. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching, everybody. And special thanks to Annie and Omzi for doing these pre-K packets with us. Don't forget to pick up your packet at the library while supplies last. And we'll see you at the library. Bye! Bye.